Cool. You're with Julian on the Brown Notes and a review of Godzilla Minus One, currently the world's most pirated intellectual property, and because it's only streaming on Paramount Plus in Japan and hasn't been available in any other service, and the whole world wanted to watch it. So I flew to Japan and I signed on for Paramount Plus for 30 days just to watch this film. Which is the 37th film in the Godzilla franchise, which I think began in 1954 and is the longest running film franchise in history. And in the modern era, I think called the Rewa era, this is the fifth film in Japan, but it's also been, a, uh, it's running parallel with the American franchise, so much so that this is now the most pirated film world. The other Godzilla film, the latest American one, is actually in the cinemas still. Um, and it blew the lid off late last year by, I think, topping the uh, box office in America, which meant that I think the Miyaz he uh, Heyo Miyazaki anime film and Godzilla Minus One were back, like almost back-to-back -back Japanese number ones at the US box office, quite something. I reckon the Chinese were very envious of that, actually. Um, and it won the Best Special Effects Oscar, and a lot of people thought it should have won more. And looking at the production design overall and everything else, it uh, certainly could have been in the running more than the American films have. So this is interesting because a lot of a lot of the recent Japanese era ones have sort of had a more modern slant, and the American ones have been set in the present day. This one goes all the way back to the first Godzilla film, so it is it's broadly a not a remake per se, but a reimagining of that sort of post World War II Japan, which is you know the the whole premise of Godzilla was. America dropped two nuclear bombs and um, a whole lot of other bombs on on Tokyo and um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and about you know hundreds of other places in Japan were reduced to complete rubble, but in particular the effect of the nuclear bombs creating the uh, this mental place where you know uh, it's it's it's. It's created this morphed dinosaur to wreak havoc on Japan. Uh, and, and then that's essentially what this film is, which is essentially what the original film was as well. Um, this time we get um, a kamikaze pilot at the end of the war, Ryon, Ryon Nosuke Kamiki, as a uh, former kamikaze pilot. Ryon no. Ryan no Suki Kamike. Uh, so he starts the film as a kamikaze pilot that chickens out. Uh, one of the interesting premises here is on the way that heroism is viewed. Occasionally he comes across people that regard him as a coward for his acts in the war, but a lot of other people in the film would regard, you know, if you'd have killed yourself at the end of the war for this, you would have been a moron. And actually we want you know you, if you want to be a hero be a hero now throwing your life away for something so stupid um but anyway at the start he pretends his plane has faltered so he lands on this island fixes up kamikaze planes an unusual premise um and they kind of know that there's nothing wrong with his plane and they know that the end of the war is coming that night the godzilla a smaller version of godzilla um attacks and the he's put in a position where he can probably die, but possibly help. Um, and he doesn't. Again, he is wrecked by cowardice. He wakes up and everyone is dead, apart from like one guy. The whole lot's been white. And that one guy really blames him, saying, why didn't you fire your guns? You could have helped. Um, and he didn't. So he returns to uh, his, this, I don't know if, it's not Tokyo or I think it's a different city in Japan. He returns and it's really beautifully framed a lot of this film. Like he looks like he's living in the rubble. Uh, it's amazing the way that they, they've set up this shanty town where he returns to and one of his neighbours is like, you coward, you lived basically. Very quickly he is established by a homeless woman who has had a, a young infant child given to her by a dying mother. 
And that is a very strong premise for the film. He is racked by PTSD. He is racked by guilt of cowardice. He's got this unwanted visitor who is this street woman that's come to live with him, who is um, Minami Hemabi, who's gorgeous. And she's like, for me, possibly even the standout of the film. She's, she's a woman that's lost everything, her parents, and is you know, reduced to being a thief on the street, basically, but has taken a baby of a dying mother and is now the mother of this child and has no idea what to do and just basically moves in uh, with Kamiki and uh, sets up home there. And it's a lovely, it is a lovely relationship and, you, and it, it gives a great deal of oomph to the what's coming because you actually want them to survive so much you want them to be a happy family even though he's got these very sort of immature versions of what that should be uh he he sort of keeps her at arm's length for ages even to the point where she's dressing up really really nicely i love the way that people's clothing in this film reflect a point in their lives they are she becomes like an office girl because you know she has to move out because he wants to find a wife and all his friends are like, she's beautiful and you've got a baby here and you're actually not seeing the picture. What is wrong with you? Uh, and he he's, he basically ends up getting a job as a minesweeper. Uh, it's one of the only jobs going. It pays well and it's incredibly dangerous. And during his minesweeping, he encounters a Godzilla that has been touched by the nuclear bombs going off. Uh, sorry, not the nuclear bombs for Hiroshima or Nagasaki, but from the Bikini Atoll explosion. And Godzilla is now massive and extremely annoyed. Um, so the these crew from the boat, from this minesweeper, form a bond that lasts for the rest of the movie. And the rest of the movie is them coming to some way of fighting Godzilla who, uh, pro, you know, he destroys the city and unfortunately uh, some of the major characters in the film as well. So this is a fantastic film. Um, I wouldn't go into it with expecting the level of action of an American film. There's an awful lot of downtime here which is devoted to drama. I, and the other thing is I would expect much better characterizations than you've got in any of the Godzilla films. You know, though my, I've loved the American Godzilla films. I haven't seen the most recent one. Um, the the one thing that's always stuck out is how bad the humans have been. Um, and they had it right with Brian Cranston losing his wife in the first hour of the first film. And then they just killed him off. And it was just like, you've left us with a bunch of nobodies. But here there's a really strong element of um, human development in the characters, which is great and makes you care about what happens to them. And the other thing is the socio-political commentary that goes on. I was surprised by how much this film attacks Japan. Not so much, you know, just attacking Japan, but at at attacking stereotypes of Japanese belief systems, attacking the way that Japan treated its people in World War II. It's pretty strong stuff, and it doesn't shy away from anything. Um, so that's also fantastic. And the culmination of everything that comes together is, is hugely exciting as well uh, there are interesting side characters along the way I'm going to give this a high review not just because it is such a good film everything about the making of it is really good as well the cinematography by Kozo Shibasaki is phenomenal and I don't mean the special effects I mean the actual framing of everything like the waters and it looks so blue and the framing of the houses in destruction where they're living is so vi is so well framed. Like, I don't know why he wasn't nominated for, or she wasn't nominated for um, Best Cinematography. Maybe maybe they were, maybe I just missed that one. But the cinematography is great. Also, uh, Naoki Sato's theme music, the score of the film, is fantastic. Like the level of production design on the music and the cinematography is just, yeah, and the writing is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Um, you're not going to get the same as an American film here because there's a lot more dramatic development. Um, flaws are... I mean, I really struggled to find flaws in this film. Really, narratively or any other way. I didn't like the very end. Um, there's something that happens at the very end which I wanted to happen and is too pat and too trite and too quick and I, I wish that they'd reframed or restructured that last quarter to have 
made that better. Uh, it's it, it the way it happened was probably the weakest part of the film, but overall, you know, it's a fantastic looking and sounding film. The effects are great. Um, when Godzilla lets rip, he does with great impact. The characters are beautifully defined. Uh, it looks fantastic. Um, so Godzilla minus one, I'm going to give a nine out of ten.